Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Psychedelic here. It's a Saturday morning. I'm coming at you and I'm kind of just waking up yet. So I apologize if my voice is a little groggy yet. It's not the monkey pox. We've now moved into phase 69, chimps disease. It's going pretty well so far. Don't have to use the banana patch anymore. Waiting for the next variant. So anyways, got some online stuff for you. Got a couple items. And then I went to Omaha a couple days ago as well. Found some cool stuff there. A couple records I'm kind of sneaking into some new territory as well. So let's dive in. So we're going to start off with the online stuff first. This is one that I picked up on the cheap end. Didn't necessarily need it because I do have the LP. Um, I would, would like to track down the original sometime. But this is one of my favorite LPs and you know favorite artists of all time. Found on the cheap end on eBay. This is Merrill Fankhauser and HMS Bounty. These single things. Can't believe this track alone didn't hit off into stardom or just at least be some sort of regional hit. Uh, flip side, which I think is the better track, Rich Man's Fable. A lot more catchy, a little fuzz driven, kind of a uh, Birds Brothers action going on uh, in the harmonies and such, but I really love. Uh, the Shamley LP as well. I have the Gearson reissue, which is just fine, but um, seems like they're definitely spiking up in price as well. Uh, the originals are like, you know, over a hundred bucks, so I'm pretty happy with my reissue for now, but he can craft some great songs, man. He can just write tunes like no other, like all the songs sound so different, yet he kind of has this really basic pop approach and it always works for me. It's not really one week moment on the LP, but yeah, I spotted this for like 10 bucks plus shipping and it's like near mint all around, so couldn't pass it up. The other one was up online as well, the non-LP track. I forget the name of it. I think it's called I'm Coming Home. It's also good, but I kind of wanted that one a little more. Um, kind of has my two favorite tracks on there, so very good. And then I picked up on this, so I'd never see this pop up, even the reissues, um, which this one is, but uh, if you see originals pop up, of course they're always like between 500 to a grand, and I didn't want to pay that much for this one, but this is a favorite classic as far as like US prog and site goes, out of the Motor City area, which you know you'd typically never associate this band with, but this is Bump with their one and only LP. They had a archived LP years later, I think came out in 2011, which I guess is pretty much in the same vein as this, but I haven't heard that one yet. Um, got released in 1970. I think it got recorded the year prior. You can definitely tell it's 60s flavored all around. Very keyboard organ led for the most part, even though there is some great fuzz action on here. Uh, like I said, based out of the Motor City, um, which, you know, they're kind of known around the area, I believe, in Michigan. And I do have the original single as well, Singing to the Wind, with the flip side of being a non-LP track, Winston Built the Bridge, which I believe is like one of the more stronger tracks, in my opinion. But uh, it, it has that on here, but it also has the 45 version of Singing to the Wind concluding the album. And sound quality wise, I was a little worried on it because I read some reviews you know, that were, you know, not so in favor of the sound quality, but this sounds pretty damn amazing to me. Uh, sound clarity is really high on this one. It's like a 2013 reissue on MLA. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Um, for some reason, they're just, reissues are kind of hard to track down in the U.S. Uh, since it's like an Italian reissue of some sort. Got a hype sticker here. Let you guys read that. Um, got a great deal on this, um, like around 20 bucks, so couldn't pass it up. I will definitely be featuring one of the tracks in my next Halloween psychedelic trip, and that's the track Spider's Eyes. Great, like kind of eerie organ opening up the song with these kind of pummeling drums, you know. It's a great introduction to like any psychedelic Halloween party. From the slot, it's kind of like a two minute or so track. I'll feature it in the intro of this video. Very melodic track, but it also concludes on like this acid odyssey, I call it. 
and it's called Lifelines Decisions You Can't Even Think. It's kind of a moody, almost prog piece. Um, like I said, there's some progressive leanings, but for the most part, very psych rock oriented for sure. But like I said, you have those kind of uh, progressive leanings, which a lot of bands were kind of gearing towards with uh, more use of the organ and, you know, sort of going this kind of classical route. But uh, this is it's a strong LP for sure. Okay, and then I went to a few different shops in Omaha. Only came about with four of them, but um, all killer though. Stuff I really wanted. And uh, took chances on for sure, because it's been a while since I revisited some of these. Uh, except for one of these recently. So the first one I went to was Homer's. Didn't find anything there. Came out pretty dry there, even in the new arrival bin. Didn't see anything too interesting. And then I went to Grapefruit records which opened up like an hour later they always that store always overwhelms me with like the stock they have like as far as like reissues go that are kind of out of print or just typical stuff you don't see in the shops every day you know um you know cultural records from all across the world are uh, supplied in that shop and they do they do a pretty good job of uh keeping those things stocked but i think this is one i passed on maybe last time I was there, but I can't remember. It's definitely one of those uh, compilations I wanted to pick up down the road. This is Function Underground. This came out in like 2017 on Now Again. Came with a nice booklet here. Um, this mentions all the, well, not all the groups, but this booklet pretty much covers all of like, you know, all the history of uh, black musicians, black artists, and the whole culture itself basically what spawned all these groups and uh you know kind of touching base on how they all originated looking up to their you know heroes like uh hendrix lystone arthur lee among many others but yeah this is a great compilation of like mainly focusing on like the rock sound from the late 60s early 70s um but of course naturally there's definitely some funk and soul elements permeating throughout and I really love how the booklet touches on you know how just how racist the times were I mean not that it was a good time to look back on that but I'm just glad the book was very open and honest about you know just how record record execs always were trying to push like what the typical black sound was when bands like this were trying to push the boundaries and trying to express themselves more and I'm really glad they uh opened up on that but no there is a local band on here la carnival it's based out of uh, omaha and that single goes for like a grand at least and boy that'd be something to find in a thrift shop for sure it's on the pacific avenue label which i do have another 45 on that label but yeah some killer stuff here this is um one of like two that i'm trying to hunt down i think the other one's called Cold Heat came out like in 2004, which I think it's like a 2LP set from now again. Would love to track that one down too, but this is just as good. Like I said, more rock oriented, but very, very tasteful compilation. This is the first one I spotted in the shop, and this is kind of one I've been looking for a little bit. It's not in the greatest shape, but um, for the price and just the fact I saw it in person, I couldn't let it go. This is a band called Exit with their album Plight of the Red Man. This came out on the Rare Earth label. If you guys don't know, uh, Exit was actually a band that originated from Lincoln State Exit, which had an album on Mainstream. Not really a big fan of that record, but I do love what came after it with this one and their stuff prior to Lincoln State Exit, which I do believe they were just under the name Exit. But I would love to track down the one after this, which is a compilation of their stuff from 67 to 68. I've definitely touched light on it in my one video, you know, most wanted records on Discogs. Pulls for about like 200 or 300 bucks, but it's probably the most garage psych driven stuff, which I am totally into. It's very good. But this one kind of touches more light on like more of the political and spiritual Indian culture. But definitely has like a kind of a naturally 
psychedelic mood to it. Um, you have the opening and ending track, which are basically the same track, but kind of comes full circle in the end. Very long tracks, like eight to nine minutes, I think. And it all ties together really well. So, have much, much respect for uh, Native American culture. So, along with Redbone, you know, one of many, one of the, I mean, there's quite a few Native American groups, you know, kind of pushing, pushing the envelope around this time. So, Exit's just uh, fantastic, though. I think they made one more before this one, but I haven't touched base with it. I don't think it's as good from what I've heard, but Rare Earth, you can still pick these up for like 20 bucks, roughly. And that's what I paid for this. So, very, very happy to track this one down as I gave it a listen on one of my walks not too long ago. So, I have to spin this one yet. Okay, and this one, this is the last one I found from Grapefruit. I found this one in the new Rival bin. Kind of surprised to find it there. I've never seen this one in person yet. So, I don't know how much it goes for online, but I figured 20 bucks. It's probably about the going price for this. And I had to kind of revisit this one. I forgot, you know, what the second half sounded like. This is Faust with their first album here. This is kind of what the original used to look like with the whole design going on with, uh, I think it was on clear vinyl. Don't quote me on that, but I do remember it, it was like a clear looking cover, you know, sort of looked like this x-ray exam going on here. But the uh, sound quality is fantastic. I think it's a Russian reissue like came out in 2007 but yeah this is fantastic i gave this a listen last night it's, it had been a while and i love how they open with like a beatles sample you can very faintly hear it in the mix um, as it opens the album but yeah it's very tape manipulation oriented lots of sound collage effects going on um, sometimes erratic sometimes very bright harsh sounds but all at the same time, it's always moving. It's always going in a, in a direction you don't expect it to go. Um, sometimes repetitive, but in a good way. This is just one that kind of grows on you. So, so far, I mean, I don't know if I want to say it's my favorite. I do like the second one quite a bit so far. But this is just as good. Um, you know, just opening about out of the gate with this one. And uh, came out in 71. And... For its time period, um, you know, no doubt a classic among the, you know, experimental German sounds. So, um, you know, very influenced, I think, by Zappa, of course, and I can't even think. Maybe John Cage? I wouldn't be surprised, but yeah, give Faust a listen. This is superb, superb stuff for what it is, man. It's certainly psychedelic in its own way. Um, not in the most traditional way, where it's like kind of musically constructed, but it's more like a sound wave of just like a ocean of sound waves thrown at you and just taking a shower in it. <laughs> I don't know. It's early in the morning. I'm trying to think of like cool terms and I'm just failing on all ends. So as far as other things I witnessed in Omaha, as soon as I opened the door to Grapefruit, you know, exiting out of the building, I saw a man urinating on the brick road in the old market, so I don't know if that's a common thing, but um, just to do that in public, I was just like, I think I'm going to go this way. I'm just glad my car is that in that direction. <laughs> so didn't make too many more stops. I just decided to uh, hit Vinyl Cup. Didn't see anything there. Then I moved over to a place I'd never been to before called 402 Vinyl, which I've heard some good things about. Uh, I think from Tuco maybe, or someone in the Omaha area, I heard them talk about it. it. certainly surpassed my expectations. I mean, it was definitely classic rock oriented, but I mean, if you're into classic rock, you know, stuff like Sabbath or Zappa, um, you know, Pink Floyd, King Crimson, you name it. I mean, he's got like import madness in there. There's just a lot of great imports you can find. And all of them are in clean shape, and you can find some good prices in there. Um, I was pretty surprised, but didn't really need any of that stuff. Nothing was really catching my eye at the time, but I checked out the 45 section. There's 
The second in the back, it's just all 45s and there were some cool looking labeled 45s there, but turned out they weren't worth any money. So just kind of passed on them. But out of all of them, this is the one that stood out and happy to say this was probably a good deal because currently there's no copies in the US for sale of this pressing. And he gave me a little bit of a discount for like 20 bucks. So I was happy to pick this up. This is Noi 75. This is like their third LP. Now I'm pretty familiar with their first album for the most part, but their second album, uh, I have to revisit. Don't quite remember what it sounded like, but um, I do remember this one's also highly regarded uh, by Krautrock fans and, you know, German fans alike. But with their third album here, um, I was coming in totally blind. Hadn't heard this one yet. And last night I listened to this, this is amazing. I probably enjoyed this one a little more than Faust last night, but this is great stuff. Um, totally, totally uh, unexpected sounds here, especially on that first side. A little gatefold action there. And uh, this is like a, I forget what kind of pressing this is. I don't know if it had a release date online, but it's a European pressing of some sort. And the whole first side, I just realized it's kind of like a split LP, a lot more ambience and atmospheric kind of work going on, but yet using a lot of rhetoric, um, a lot of simple rhythms moving throughout, but at the same time, very catchy instrumental work. Um, I feel like I've heard that first track somewhere. It's very, it's very catchy, you know, bass line and rhythms going on, but that third track, it was like super quiet. I had to turn it up. It's just like so minimal. There's only piano, ocean waves, and like a little bit of German spoken word in the mix. Um, pretty minimal stuff. Once you get to the side two though, um, it's got more of this kind of punk attitude, which I guess they kind of, the members behind this made a little deal where, you know, they want to show off both sides of, you know, some stuff from Cluster and then kind of show more of the ever growing punk sound that was going on at the time uh, with the sec with the first track on side two called hero which i guess iggy pop must have covered or performed live at some point i read online but uh yeah this one totally totally surprised me so i'm gonna have to revisit this one um really enjoyed the first side a lot and yeah i think i think that's maybe the only vocal driven track that hero track on there but yeah this is this is way cool pickup so had a little trouble finding the place too it was like in this nearly abandoned uh shopping mall in omaha i had never been to this place but i parked in the back because it showed that 402 vinyl was like kind of near the back side and just looks totally abandoned back there and had locked doors and then once I went into the shopping mall on the front side, it was just like a total ghost town. It was super quiet and eerie. Anyways, had a great time in Omaha and just, you know, don't seem to turn out with a whole lot of records every time I visit there, but um, it's always a fun time just getting out and, you know, just enjoying the day, even though it's blistering hot right now. Um, this, this past week has just been killing me lately. Uh, the humidity just, won't go away it's like sometimes my fridge can't even hold up you know <laughs> but uh yeah anyways hope you guys are doing well have a great weekend and i will be sharing these on instagram eventually so take care and we shall see you soon